you much, Philippe, and uh, thank you to everyone for your presence here this afternoon. The uh, atmosphere is going to be favorable to this because I'm going to uh, work with uh, two people who have used the innovation in order to make uh, the role of a journalist more easily reachable, and this is they often do dangerous work. So now I will uh, move over to the uh, page where I have their names up on the board. We have uh, two geeks here, and in some ways that is the very core of our subject this evening. They uh, are better users of a computer than I am. That's great. It's not the right one. There are also people of great quality, and those people up on the screen. But uh, we can't uh, put uh, everyone up. Oh, never mind. We'll find them. So the uh, chap over here is Sheikh Fal. He comes from Senegal. And uh, he has uh, led uh, several innovative projects, in including Sunu in 2011, a uh, fact-checking uh, project and a crowdsourcing and crowd mapping concerning political questions in his country. And to his right, we have Khadija Ismailova. And you will see how this is written in a few minutes. Uh, it's rather complex. It's better to be able to see it on the screen. There we go. Let's try all together. There we are. Fantastic. Don't uh, clap uh, too much for technical problems, otherwise it will encourage these problems. Shaker here, who is uh, a web project leader, who in 2011 created Sunu, which uh, includes a lot of aspects of uh, innovative uh, journalism and technology for fact-checking and also political crowdsourcing and crowd mapping in Senegal, which is his country. In uh, 2013, he was nominated by RSF uh, for the uh, for a cyber activist reward. And, but before that, I would like to uh, thank uh, Khadija Ismailova who is a member of the OCCRP, which is an international investigation organization and uh, regularly uh, chairs uh, a program on uh, Radio Liberty and Radio Free Europe and who has been rewarded with the um, Courage Award by the uh, International Journalism Foundation and uh, works in Azerbaijan in investigative journalism. As you know, this uh, country is uh, not among the uh, top 10 of uh, freedom of the press. And uh, she gives particular depth to work that she does and uh, a new power and efficiency thanks to innovation and uh, new techniques uh, brought about by internet. And I will uh, hand over to her on the subject uh, for her to be able to present her subject. Well, our guest tonight. Uh, so, uh, hi, uh, we're not too technically savvy, as you, you could see. But uh, anyways, uh, the life teaches us to do things we have never done in Azerbaijan. When in 2009, uh, actually the end of 2008, the government decided to ban Radio Free Europe from local frequencies. We uh, lost our license to broadcast our programs on FM. We faced the harsh reality to, uh, we didn't know what to do because we were radio journalists and uh, we had this license on FM, we were broadcasting on FM, and now we faced a harsh reality, what to do, how to address our uh, uh, audience. Then we switched to web uh, totally, and what we did, we, um, retrained our radio journalists to multimedia journalists. So we gave them all uh, cameras, smartphones, and, uh, and they started producing video things. And then uh, basically uh, the web content became uh, viral in Azerbaijan and people started, uh, started uh, sharing and uh, distributing all our content uh, through Facebook and uh, and uh, their blogs and publishing, republishing uh, uh, our videos and our um, web content. But, I'll, uh, but right now I want to talk 
about the content that is uh, very interesting, uh, which is in investigative journalism. And uh, it's, it's very interesting, but it's also so complicated that it's difficult to explain people sometimes how complicated are the schemes uh, employed, used by the organized crime figures uh, and corrupt, uh, corrupt regimes. So I, I will tell you about several investigations that Organized Crime and Corruption Reporting Project did. These are the, it's here. These are investigations. <coughs> Let's start from our own guys. So um, they normally, uh, what they do, they hide their names behind several, several uh, companies. You don't see names of your president or their relatives in the paperwork in your country, but if you dig further, you can see that the company that gets a huge, uh, huge contract in Azerbaijan is incorporated in the United Kingdom, but that company is also, you don't see any names there. It's incorporated by several other companies in uh, Panama. And only in Panama you can see the names of the people who are involved, in fact, there. And it's very difficult to explain it in a short web story to your user it, to explain it. So that's why we are trying to visualize the, uh, the, in graphics, what we are trying to say and to give them the picture of the scheme they are using. For example, uh, you can see here up there, Ilham Aliyev is the president of Azerbaijan and he has two daughters, Arzu and Leila. They own three companies in Panama. And uh, that company, that, uh, those three companies incorporated a company in uh, the United Kingdom, and this company in United Kingdom owns a share in huge gold contract. They, they, they explore gold in Azerbaijan. So everyone in that village where they dig for gold thought that it's English company, and they were blaming English people for coming and destroying their life because uh, the, the gold uh, diggers, they came and they took their lands, they stopped their water, they destroyed the road, and people were blaming English people uh, for coming and destroying their lives. And only by telling this story, we, could, we managed to explain them that it, it fact, in fact, it's not English company. It's, it's the company is actually, uh, related to Azerbaijani president, and the president they are uh, so fond of is actually making money on their, uh, uh, on their uh, problems. Uh, these kind of graphics are helping to people to digest the hu huge amount of information about the companies. Normally, it's like matryoshka. I, I don't know if you know what uh, that word means. It's a... Mais les poupées russes. Yeah. It's like uh, pu uh, puppet in puppet, doll in doll, and then it's like you open one box, you take another box, and then another, another box. It's very difficult to explain it with words, so you, we have to find uh, better ways to explain it. Another... Uh, another, th uh, this is another example of Trident Trust. It's much more complicated scheme. Uh, you can see here uh, a huge number of companies, and you can only see the links between company. If you if you click on one uh, company, you can see which country, which. Uh, people, which firms, it's also incorporated. And, and what does it concern? What's the, what's the matter at stake here? Uh, this is uh, the, uh, from the project that was called Offshore Crimes. 
it was uh, this project won uh, Daniel Pearl Award in 2011, and it was a huge project uh, showing money laundering scheme involved with uh, where Russian Ukrainian uh, pol politicians were involved, and it was showing how they are uh, using Cyprus and the New Zealand companies to launder their money to hide their interests. And the similar projects were done to show, uh, uh, show uh, the, um, you, you probably have heard about Sergei Magnitsky case, uh, uh, the Russian lawyer who was uh, tortured to death in uh, Russian prison. And uh, the people who tortured him in prison actually made money on the uh, made money on the, uh, his case, and uh, uh, our reporter, or CRP reporter, could trace the companies uh, through offshore zones and find the tax officers who put him in prison. Uh, that those tax officers have actually interests in in his case. So, the, but. It's it, these stories, and now I'm troubled to tell these stories because it's these stories are very hard to put in words. It's like complicated scheme. It's a very complicated uh, system, and these pictures help us to visualize. Uh, these graphics help us to visualize those uh, things, uh, those schemes. And uh, when we showed these schemes to uh, people living in the village, for example, where the gold digging take place, it was clear to them. They, they could understand that. And, uh, it's, uh, and then we, sometimes we do video um, and, uh, video and uh, other ways to do. This is another example of the uh, reporting in, uh, about Azerbaijan corruption. This is about... Uh, Azerbaijani oligarchs' businesses in Czech Republic. What we did, actually, we uh, used the investigative dashboard. It's um, the project by OCCRP to, to, um, uh, to get into Czech database of companies. And there we made a search of companies by just searching names of the uh, popular names in Azerbaijan, uh, members of parliament and so on. And we found out that uh, a member of parliament, Javanshir Pashazadeh, and his brother, he, who is the chief cleric in Azerbaijan, own a company that does a lot of construction in Czech Republic. So they, uh, they if you click on their name, you can see the arrows going to their company and then their uh, their uh, apartment complex they uh, are building and so on. Then, uh, then we found out that uh, there is another guy, Arif Pashaev, who is the father-in-law of our president. He also owns a company that owns a lot of things in Czech Republic. And uh, his daughter, the president's daughter, also owns a lot of uh, a lot of property and companies in Czech Republic. None of the uh, none of these have been reported uh, or declared in Azerbaijan. So it's also an issue of the tax evasion uh, in Azerbaijan Republic. But also Azerbaijani laws um, uh, Azerbaijani laws ban Azerbaijani uh, members of parliament and government employees from having business. Doesn't matter now. Uh, somewhere, probably uh, the same with uh, Fra in France and so on. So they are not, are not allowed to have business. Mm. But uh, they are breaking the law and having a business. And uh, this is one example to show how they uh, hide their business interests in different countries and uh, they evade tax taxes in Azerbaijan. But uh, what, what is innovative about this? Probably. Um, it's just a simple way to show with one picture what is happening. And uh, this is what we use there in Azerbaijan. Mm. Thank you very much. Thank you for all those examples. That was very, very, uh, very interesting. We'll get back to that. I will now speak in French. We will come back to all this.
and uh, of course you will uh, be able to uh, put questions to Khadija. But first of all, I will ask uh, Sheikh, uh, who comes from Senegal, to talk to us about his projects and uh, the way in which uh, he has uh, been engaged and uh, the innovative projects which he has launched in his, com in his country and what he's seen as uh, unusual uh, projects uh, who uh, put the web to good use uh, for more citizen-based and efficient journalism and perhaps just a little more friendly. Thank you. Thank you, Silva. I see that uh, we have a nearly empty room, as you were saying uh, earlier, Philippe. Uh, the most difficult moment is uh, often after the lunch break, but also on the last day just before the end. So I will try to distract you as much as possible, so uh, please don't uh, be surprised. So we have a citizen uh, web uh, project, of which I founded in 2012. Um, it was to do monitoring uh, and observation of the presidential elections. As Olivier Tignan said earlier, we have seen that in Senegal in 1993 and in 2000, the elections were often stained with fraud and criticism and cliches. And even if the media were used to playing a role and that in 2000 they uh, took part of this with the mobile phone scheme. There came a time when we needed to find a modus operandi in order to try to organize this mass of information produced by the media and also produced by the citizens who are often in the election stations. And so we had to use the tools which we had available to us and also ways of processing this information. And so we need to be efficient in our use to be able to do crowdsourcing, crowd mapping, and to be able to use the tools which were available to us, whether they are Facebook, Twitter, Storify, etc., to be able to look at the circulation of information. But we also needed to try to find a common ground which would allow us to summarize all of the content from all the information published in Senegal on, for example, the presidential election or the electoral process. So I created a hashtag on Twitter for this project and also a Facebook page. And this was a, a way of uh, summarizing all of the content sent by the citizens, by the press, and also by the international press on Senegal by Senegalese people or by people uh, outside the country. So this was a big challenge, which we have managed to uh, overcome, but I won't go into details. I'd like to tell you the rest. The platform has allowed uh, 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 us to, to succeed at three aims. First of all, access to information. We wanted uh, citizen to be able to have access to information, be it uh, the uh, candidates program, the political speeches, the campaign, or political information. Second objective, we wanted to find a way of uh, implicating the political powers in this project. And this is not uh, the same situation in uh, different countries. They are not necessarily on the internet because they are afraid to use it. So we had to try to overcome their fear and make them see it as an opportunity to seize, to say, look, you are, you should be on the internet and you can exist on the internet. Your videos and your messages and your electoral program will stay there. And you will also be able to receive a feedback coming directly from the citizens who are not necessarily in favor of your political party. So that's what we told them. And all the candidates uh, were willing to join us and they were all able to publish their profile on our platform. The candidate's profile was automatically synchronized uh, with a Facebook and Twitter account in order to allow the information to be broadcast on several platforms. And uh, that uh, gives the users, the internet users, the opportunity to follow the candidate and to uh, exert a critical judgment on his campaign. And this is what I will emphasize. We needed to uh, turn this uh, political uh, discourse, which is often full of uh, utopia or lies. For example, they will um, promise a uh, new factory of one sort or another, but this never actually turns out into reality. 
it's just political speech. So we wanted all this to be made accessible to everyone. And once accessible, individuals can come and uh, uh, add their observations to this. Just a question on what is uh, being shown here, the information on a candidate. Just a silly question. Is that his personal email ad address or his personal home address? Uh, yes, absolutely, yes. He could not uh, refuse. So we would then publish his program, his agenda, his electoral agenda, his uh, election poster to allow each uh, a Senegalese person, even if he is in Helsinki, to be able to see what uh, the candidate looks like. Here's a photograph, here's a videos. Why videos? Well, because during the election campaign, the uh, uh, time uh, broadcast time they allowed is either three minutes or five minutes, and and he's not he, that that time period lasts until the following day. So we said you can come to our platform. You will uh, upload your videos, and though your videos will be accessible to everyone, someone who has. Uh, missed your ca uh, video, ca your campaign video, because they were buying stuff on the market at the time, will be able to catch up on the internet. And then we had a comments page, which is the most important space to allow each Senegalese person to be able to bring his comments t on the program and also to say what he thinks about the candidate. Then on the day of the election, we formed uh, a network of observers of e-observers. The idea is that it is a citizen who uh, volunteers to participate. And we give him a t-shirt. That was the little trick that we used. A, a t-shirt in which it was written, I am making efforts. I'm committed. And so then he goes around the election center. He photographs all kinds of information which might be of interest to Senegalese people. He then sends them automatically to Twitter via 2012 hashtag. And that then allows us to interact uh, through this platform with uh, real-time information. This uh, allows a Senegalese person to witness the vote counting after the closure of the electoral poll station. And once the result is then published by that poll station, that person had to photograph that result and send it to us on Twitter and on our platform. And behind that, uh, we had a, a piece of software specially designed to calculate in real time the results sent in. And that's how we were able, before 10 p.m., to give the uh, television change, so here you see a synchronization between the classic uh, or conventional media and new media to allow the uh, Seleganese people to be informed in real time. The uh, television took up uh, our information feed and we fed the platform and uh, we were able to uh, give out the uh, uh, trend of the election count so there was no more fraud was possible and of course the president nevertheless was smart enough to uh, call his um, opponent to congratulate him before the announcement of the official result. So yes, this brought about real change. So you have a regulatory role. Now, you, of course, you need to be an official to judge. But you are playing a role in uh, fighting against uh, fraud. Yes, upstream, because we have uh, done researches. Uh, the uh, electoral dossier for Senegal, which is available on a website designed by a friend of mine, and behind that I was doing some tests and I tried to, to modify this platform a little bit, and I understood that a Senegalese person who was able to identify himself uh, through this website uh, to uh, see uh, the electoral results would have to give his uh, name and his photograph. But what I discovered is that if you changed the last number of his ID card, he was able to find his name several times uh, over. So that gave him n nine attempts, for example. And uh, that means that uh, you can make that person vote in a virtual fa fashion behind a machine. So when I reeled, revealed this to my studies, the minister responsible for elections came out and said that this uh, error was going to be corrected, and this was uh, corrected in uh, 48 hours. Earlier, you talked to me, because of course we, 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 we arranged this, of course, uh, 
choreographed this previously. Um, you talk to us uh, about some innovative approach to journalism in your country, and uh, I wanted to talk about uh, the, your particular initiative, but maybe you could uh, give us uh, some examples of innovative journalism before handing over to the floor, who, which, where we see there is a lot of impatience uh, to ask questions. So, indeed. This particular uh, project has brought about a lot of uh, citizen uh, energy and a lot of debate. I wanted to talk about this project because it, it was uh, developed by uh, rap artists, and you know how important rap artists are in uh, Senegal. Uh, today, Senegal uh, is, a is a country which has more than 3,000 rap groups, and uh, it's a young country. 75% of the country are young, and that means that those people have a lot of influence on the population. So after this project, one of the rappers launched a project which was called the uh, Rap Journal, which uh, makes uh, information available through rap. And uh, is this is broadcast on a YouTube channel. But as uh, there is always this interaction between uh, conventional media and uh, new media, the uh, private uh, television channel, which has uh, gone to has gone to meet these uh, rap artists, now broadcasts uh, this uh, in uh, prime time on uh, fr every Friday. So what we've seen is that uh, rap artists who put this about, so who uh, started off on YouTube, are now being broadcast on conventional media. Bienvenue encore une fois. Yeah, bienvenue, installez-vous, on a des nouvelles pour vous. Il y a des bonnes, il y a des mauvaises, mais il y a des nouvelles pour vous. Bienvenue, installez-vous, on a des nouvelles pour vous. Il y a des bonnes, il y a des mauvaises, mais il y a des nouvelles pour vous. Plus haute est l'ascension et plus dur sera la chute. Malheureusement, car il n'avait pas de parachute. C'est à 100 mètres que la route du sommet l'a conduit. Eh ben, je dirais à ta mère, te préparer du zombie. Faut que l'ex-ministre des airs, de la mer et de la terre, justifie 650 milliards de butins de guerre. Tout le monde en parle et chacun y va de son commentaire. Allons retrouver Arbus Awadi, notre reporter. Allô Ok, merci Romain ici à tout le PDS. Il crie, ceci n'est pas normal, le refrain de PBS. Yes. Sur les pancartes, on peut dire carré montage politique. Le peuple est dans le jeu des libéraux, toujours des polémiques. Au Sénégal, la prison est un raccourci vers la présidence. Euh, Peut-être vrai pour le perdre, mais pour il dit pas une évidence. Okay. Même si les larmes de la victime l'ont rendu sympathique. Mais nous, on n'est pas amnésique. Il y en a qui dit c'était la même clique. Toujours est-il que ça divise l'opinion publique, mais il y a du boulot. La crise doit être véridique. Depuis Rebus, c'était le général à Wadi Soupendan en international. Merci, la route aux voitures, c'est ce que veut Khalifa Sal. Baver le trottoir et que Dakar soit moins sale. Mais il fait face aux marchands ambulants, aux tabliers, aux encombrants. Refusons. Euh, une, une partie. Ah. D'ailleurs, chaque mais, mais engagé a fait un répondre à toutes vos questions de la même manière. Right, just imagine he's going to be answering your questions uh, singing rap. Maybe. Anyway, so um, that's uh, really extremely uh, trendy uh, in uh, Senegal, and uh, they all talk about it. Uh, France 24 talked about it, France 24, etc. So, anyway, so if somebody had to think about it, and somebody had to do it, and so <laughs> the translators did not interpret the rappers live, unfortunately. <laughs> now, there's. Uh, Another uh, thing, that's the um, press review. And uh, just on the written press, the print press, people don't buy newspapers anymore in Senegal. They'd rather go on the internet. And actually, uh, it's a content aggregator that we have, which uh, gathers uh, all uh, news-wise. Uh, and um, basically, they wanted to have this press review uh, from a very, uh, with a lot of uh, humor with a humorous uh, touch. It's not just the music, you'll see. This is how things usually happen in Dakar. We all meet on the street, and then we start talking forever, and then we watch TV. 
Et toi Non, ce que je n'ai pas compris, mais le procureur sur les réseaux sont forts. Comment En deux ans, je t'en regarde, il y a 3 000 pages. Même le cerveau Sengo, il n'a pas fait ça. Mais ça, c'est normal. Mais c'est 42 pages, c'est facile. Plus 3 000 annexes. Hey, regarde Karim, il a levé la main comme ça. C'est comme pour dire, je n'ai rien fait, je suis propre, je n'ai pas touché à l'argent. Il va faire les vendre en gang. D'accord. Mame, moi aussi, moi aussi, moi aussi, moi aussi, moi aussi, moi and uh, we broadcast that on YouTube. I mean, nobody has, uh, no channel has decided to uh, broadcast that, but um, it's accessible, it can be exported, it can be broadcast over several platforms. So, um, Right, so from uh, Senegal you have more examples, don't you? Plus a CD that is about to be uh, released with your best articles, your best uh, uh, blogs, etc. Uh, right, questions uh, for one or the other speaker, or for both? Now, of course, he had to ask a question. Does it have anything to do with the expression media, traditional media, right? Okay. Please introduce yourselves first before asking a question. Abdu is my name. Yes. Just to react to what the lady uh, talked about. I just wanted to know, I mean, to translate this elsewhere, to, uh, you, I would like to use it in my model, but it will be much more complicated because of uh, the scope of corruption in Algeria and the billions they steal every day. But um, <clears throat> how did you do that? Do you need to have a journalist that works that is with an expert uh, specialized in data? So you have jour a journalist for uh, data, and then you have a technician. I just wanted to know how you worked to set up the entire project. So we're talking about mapping uh, corruption in Afghanistan, in um, Azerbaijan, and how it worked. So technically speaking, how did it work? I'm interested. Well, uh, uh, I work with organized crime and corruption reporting project. It has correspondence in like, I don't know how many countries, but it's worldwide. And uh, w what we do, we collaborate with each other. Uh, for example, our correspondent in Czech Republic helped me. Once I uh, went through the database and found the names and found the companies, she went to the uh, places and uh, she did photos and so on, so she helped me in Czech Republic. I do the same for my colleagues in Czech Republic, or, or my Russian colleague does help from Russia. Uh, our co correspondent in Mexico helps us from Mexico. It's, it's like, that's what we do. We did a uh, very good job with uh, tracing Hussein Salem's money. It's uh, Hosni Mubarak's uh, close person. And uh, we worked from, uh, like, correspondence from Egypt, Romania, uh, Spain and Azerbaijan worked on this story. So we work together and then we, uh, when the, once the story is done, there is a person who works for OCCRP who does the inter, he reads the story, he understands the concept, he talks to us and then he does that visualization. Uh, uh, they, uh, now there is a pro special project that builds a platform for that. So there is a special program that will be that uh, will uh, soon be introduced, and everyone will be able to use that. You just put into enter the data, and it gives you the uh, graphic for uh, like such complicated graphic. Mm -hmm. uh, it's able to give you the graphic, but also you can uh, you can go to investigative dashboard org. It's a, it's our website, investigative dashboard org, and there you can ask for help. Like they can help you with uh, research on databases. They can help you with uh, finding you a partner journalist in any other country if you are doing a cross-border investigation. And they can help you with 
fact-checking, editing, and visualization. So th that's what they do. They help journalists to do these investigations. That's how I first asked for help, and then I started working with them. So that's how I uh, became a part of the Organized Crime and Corruption Reporting Project. Just two questions in order to, uh, to, um, to specify what you said. So uh, what is the name of the platform you were mentioning about uh, that allows people to make the same kind of maps first? And is the person who made all the data, uh, data visualization and the maps, is he uh, a, like a, a random uh, coder or is he specialized in journalist developer relations? Well, uh, the project's name is RISE. It's R-I-S-E project. It was I don't in, know it was what on top of the, of the, the yes. second one you showed. Yes. Okay. RISE project, and they do visualization on that. And uh, the person, uh, there is a person who oversees uh, the process. His name is Paul Radu. He's uh, like world famous uh, investigative journalist. He, uh, like, a couple Romanian governments. Uh, had to res government members had to resign because of his work, and he he made uh, a lot of noise uh, with uh, like worldwide. His investigations are okay. uh, very good, and he was part of that uh, offshore uh, crimes. Uh, the offshore Inc. leaks. No, no, uh, offshore no. crimes. That's uh, project, which was in 2011. It was a huge project. Uh, and uh, it showed a uh, number of uh, politicians in Balkans, in Ukraine, okay. and in Russia involved in uh, criminal uh, activity using offshore companies. Okay. But uh, he oversees the project, but there is a person who actually does it. Mm -hmm. He's technician, but he became very savvy in investigations b b through the time. So he understands what we do. Uh, and it's very important when uh, the technician I I understands what investigative journalists want wants to say. Voilà, donc c'est toujours, c'est une notion également qu'on a abordé. Right, so this is uh, something we talked about uh, yesterday, about uh, developers and journalists. Uh, the heart of all that, you have the network, the fact that you work together. It, uh, you need to learn, it takes time, uh, and it's a lot of work. And then the specs uh, that you need to give to the other guy so that he or she can do their job from the developer to the journalist. So the piece of advice I would give you is don't forget to mention the number of governments that uh, you managed to topple in your career on your CV. Um, any more questions? Yes. My name is Carol. I'm an independent uh, journalist. A question to Sheikh uh, on the Sunu project. What were the costs, human and technical costs, to set up that project? And what were your sources of uh, funding? Very good question. Thank you. Are you on open data and money? Yes. 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 I, I, I. Yes. Why? Because we didn't need any funding to do that. It cost us peanuts, zero, nothing. I personally committed myself. I designed the platform from A to Z. I did that on my bed. Yes, I did that on my bed, you know. So you have to go to Dakar, right? And then, as I said, the uh, idea, or the trick, was to have the youth involved. Senegal is blue because there are so many Facebook users. If you look at the penetration rate of the internet and the, the uh, usage of the tools themselves, I mean, we focus much more on Facebook than on Twitter. And involving those uh, youth who spend more time on the uh, pictures, comment, making comments on the uh, on current news, sports, uh, etc., we needed to tell them, to have them understand that Indeed, they have a right to be part of that uh, uh, citizen uh, dynamic and that um, they had a say and that this is a democratic process and uh, it's the people's will that matters. 
So this is what we told them. So we posted um, tweets and uh, messages. And uh, we said, well, you are young. You want to be involved. You are on the internet, whether you have a mobile phone or a PC, a laptop. Please send your messages. Send your details. And we will give you a t-shirt showing that saying that you are a model citizen. Some came out. We had 150 people in Dakar and from the entire country. And so we gave T-shirts to all of them. And who, who made the T-shirts? Well, uh, we have a team of 15 odd uh, people made up by the Association of uh, Senegalese uh, Bloggers, an association with all bloggers from the country. And so we paid our dues, we uh, contributed financially, and then we uh, designed the T-shirt and uh, had them uh, uh, made and based on those uh, t-shirts uh, you could become an observer of the presidential uh, election even if you're not a member of the senate or the house and we asked all of them to use their smartphones 95 percent of users use their smartphone a young engineer uh, created a special device whereby you could send an SMS that would be read directly on Twitter. So, so there was a bridge, a link between uh, SMS and, uh, and uh, Facebook or Twitter. Also, uh, so we never had received any funding and we don't want to be funded because you know that in Africa, whenever you get money, then afterwards you get asked something in return and we don't want that. I think you had a question, one last question indeed. Make it as long as possible. So please ask a very complicated question. Why the t-shirts? Yes, I knew you were going to ask that. I knew you were going to ask me that. It could have been trousers. It could have been uh, anything, really. It could have been dresses or mini skirts. <laughs> so why this unisex approach? Well, during the campaign, each uh, party uh, sent out T-shirts saying, I support Mr. Uh, something, I vote for Mr. Something. So we made neutral T-shirts with the slogan saying, I'm Senegalese, I'm committed, election 2012. And then with the hashtag, Sulu 2012. And why T-shirt? Because it is unisex. Uh, and uh, then, uh, no, we did not go into the uh, details. Was it a male, female T-shirt? No, 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 unisex, just basic, basic T-shirt. It was a way of identifying ourselves uh, also and to uh, uh, have access to the uh, polling uh, stations. Also, I'm not a journalist, I'm a citizen journalist, and uh, I was uh, given a... Uh, forged press card for the team. I had forged press cards made uh, for all of us with the colors of the country, press card 2012. People didn't know Suhutu 2012 and so name, first name, my picture, and that was it. It worked. It was forged, but it worked. With our t-shirt, we looked credible. That was the trick. You had to take risks. We did. May I ask a question? Because we're waiting for the uh, other uh, workshop to uh, be finished before we can, they can actually uh, move in. So did you actually work with limited resources with a network? Uh, uh, did you uh, have people who paid their dues? Uh, now, uh, based on that, to, to make innovative uh, journalism, to do innovative ju journalism these days, and to provide the information you want to provide, what would you need in your country to do what you did better? given the, uh, the uh, few uh, resources that you had? It's a very tricky question, isn't it? Yes, of course, I know. I only ask tricky questions. Senegal. Well, I won't talk about myself, but uh, rather I'll talk about for the, uh, on behalf of the entire Senegalese youth. I would say 
you need political will and courage to support this digital revolution in Africa. I believe in that revolution. I think it's an opportunity for Africa. And the government, the state, have to ensure that the internet is accessible with uh, limited uh, costs. Something affordable for the uh, Senegalese. So you need to have subsidies for IT tools, for computers, laptops, etc. Then you need to have good training so that uh, in uh, universities and in higher education uh, institutions uh, there are IT uh, uh, training uh, uh, courses uh, and uh, all of that needs to be developed. This is really what we need. Uh, otherwise, I mean, uh, creativity, you need to be creative and you need to be inventive. And what about you? What would you need in your uh, country? So in Azerbaijan, what would you need? What would journalists need to continue innovating and to continue doing what you started doing with basic resources? Well, uh, I'm not uh, as altruist as Sheikh, so I, I do work for money. Uh, I do get salary. What? Yes, I do. I do. Non, I confess. Les qui travaillent pour de l'argent, ça culpa. fait bizarre. Wow, people who work for money, gosh. Mia culpa. So, <laughs> I do work for money, but what I do is actually uh, what we do in Azerbaijan. We try to multiply our efforts by inviting citizens and citizen journalists to do the same, what we do. Because a uh, journalist in 2005 was killed in Azerbaijan because he was the only one doing investigative reporting. And uh, then I decided to join uh, and to be part of this investigative reporting thing because uh, it's important not to be alone in the field. It's important when people are doing the same, uh, there are more people doing a risky job. It's very important. So what we do, we explain exactly how we uh, conduct investigation in our stories. When I do it in Azerbaijani, I, do, I explain step by step what I did to, uh, to reveal this corruption scheme. And I show uh, everyone in the country, like everyone who reads this story can see that uh, can see how it has been done. I also conduct uh, free and paid workshops uh, for uh, young journalists, for citizen journalists, so they can do the same. Because uh, techniques, uh, what do you need for investigative reporting? And uh, it's the courage, curiosity, and some skills. So we can give uh, Skills, but uh, courage and curiosity, it's something that tu, should tu come. Pas des cours de courage encore, ça, you don't give uh, courage lessons yet, so that's not part of your curriculum. I, I don't give uh, courage lessons, but what we do, we support everyone who oh. gets in trouble for reporting. Uh, and when I got in trouble for reporting this, I got supported uh, by very large number of people in the country. So that's what we need. We need support to those who are doing uh, the uh, risky job, and this is what is needed. The rest will come. Voilà. Donc, les journalistes ont besoin de confrères. So, journalists need uh, co-workers and support. And now, I'll hand over to Monsieur Kouva, who is uh, getting restless here behind uh, his uh, lectern. And I would like you to applaud them.